In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to a financial statement analysis, going through those questions and then practicing test taking skills with them. First question, to compute trend percentages, we should either A, choose the base period, divide analysis period amount by base period amount and multiply that amount by 100. B, subtract the latest period number from the base period number. C, subtract the base period amount from the current period, divide the result by the analysis uh, period amount and multiply that amount by 100. Or D, compare amounts to a competitor. Okay, let's go through this again using the process of elimination. To compute trend percentages, we should. So we have trend percentages. What do we do to compute the trend percentages? That seems like a horizontal type of analysis. We're doing a trend over time. How do we do that? A, choose the base period. That sounds familiar. Base period, I remember some. D, uh, divide analysis period amount by the base period amount. That sounds kind of familiar. And then multiply that amount uh, by 100%. Okay, and then B says subtract the latest period number from the base period. So subtract the latest period from the base period. Maybe I'll keep that for now. And then C says subtract the base uh, period amount from the current period. So we have the subtraction and then divide the result by the analysis by the analysis period amount and multiply that amount by 100. Okay, now A now C and A sound very similar, which makes me think it's probably might be one of those two. And D says compare amounts to a competitor. Now, I don't think that sounds, doesn't sound like it fits into all the rest of these, which are kind of complicated. So I don't think that's it. Between these three, it looks to me like A and C are, are similar. So if I had no idea, I'd say maybe it's not B because A and C seem to be kind of similar. And, and so I'm going to go between those two. So, between, so to compute trend percentages, we either A, choose the base period, divide analysis uh, period amount by the base period amount and multiply that amount by 100 or subtract the base period amount from the current period, divide the result by the analysis uh, period amount and multiply that amount by, the, by 100. Now of those two, it's actually going to be A because we're doing, the, we're doing the, trend, uh, the trend analysis. So we're not basically doing the subtraction problem. We're comparing everything. We're comparing everything back to that base period. So to do that, we have to choose the base period because it's arbitrary. We're going to choose whatever we think we're going to compare everything else to. Divide the analysis period by the base period. So we're going to divide that out. And when we multiply by 100, that's basically just converting the decimal place. If we did it in a calculator, we'd have a decimal. And we want to convert it to, in essence, uh, a percent. We, we format it in kind of a, a percentage format, typically. So A, final answer, final answer. To compute trend percentages, we should A choose the base period, divide analysis period amount by the base period amount and multiply that amount by 100. Next question. Reported cash of 16,000 and total assets of 180,000. It's common size percent for cash equals, and then we have our percentages. So we're actually going to, of course, have to do some calculations. Going to jump over to Excel for those calculations. Now, this one's fairly straightforward, like a lot of multiple choice questions will be with calculations because we can't give a lot of information oftentimes. So we only have the two numbers here. We got cash, we got cash, which is the 116,000, and we have the total assets, assets, and that's going to be the 180,000. So we want a common size statement. Now, what we're doing typically a common size statement is we're comparing each category, each line item on the financial statement to the total amount, which in this case, it's, a, it's an asset we're talking about, something on the balance sheet. So we're going to be comparing each line item, in this case cash, to the total, total assets of 180,000. We'll do that with a ratio analysis, a division problem. This equals the 16,000 divided by the 180,000. And you would think that would be it. So let's put a percentage on it and we'll make it a percent. Let's add some decimals. Let's see how many decimals we have over here. And notice over here, we got kind of a formatting thing. It's like, how are we representing this thing? We have a percent. Uh, so the question is, is basically, how should we represent it? So we've got 8.89%. Now, remember, if you did this with a, with a calculator, it would be 116,000 divided by 180,000. And you'd have a decimal. To make it a percent, we moved the two places over. And then we would probably round to some amount of, di amount of digits, possibly two or something like that. So let's then go over to our data. Now, this is what we came to, 8.89. Uh, this one, 
you know, seems like a misrepresentation of the data because 0.0889 would be right if it didn't have a percentage because that's what the calculator would, would give us. But the fact that it has a percentage over here means it's 0.0889%. And that's why that doesn't make sense. This one is 889 uh, which again it has a kind of a decimal problem if it's got if it's a percent we're looking for the 8.89 percent so the fact that these three then are just formatted a little bit differently would make me think that it's one of those two although these two are the same way formatted differently but these are nowhere near the number we had final answer we're going with b next question current assets minus current liabilities is either a profit margin b current asset over uh, c current ratio d working capital or e quick assets let's go through this again using the process of elimination current assets minus current liabilities is either profit margin so profit margin possibly we'll keep it for now b says the current asset over should be turnover you would think so the fact that it has over doesn't seem uh, quite right but notice uh current that's usually a ratio and this has just a minus problem so it's not really a ratio, so I don't think it's going to be that one. And the current ratio, we have current assets and current liabilities, which you would think current ratio, but again, it's a subtraction problem, and this is a ratio, which means division typically. So it doesn't seem like it's going to be that one. That would be the closest one you would think. And then this one says the working capital, so uh, possibly working capital, and then quick assets. And we know that the quick, in my mind, quick assets and the and the current ratio. Are, are similar or a quick asset ratio if it was a ratio it would be similar and and if it was a ratio it would be a ratio if we're just talking about the quick assets themselves then we're just adding up assets and we have no subtraction in it so it doesn't seem like it'd be e i'll keep a and d if those are possible subtraction or possible you know not division problems although the profit margin percent or ratio would be so we got the current assets minus the current liabilities is the uh, profit margin where you would consider usually sales minus the cost of goods sold profit margin profit margin ratio then you could take that and divide it by the sales so that doesn't seem like it working capital then that's the one that's our final answer so again it has the current assets and the current liabilities but it's not the current ratio because it's not a ratio it's a subtraction problem so final answer current assets minus current liabilities is d working capital next question Current assets of 200,000 and current liabilities of 142,000. The working capital is what? So let's do our Excel. We'll pull up Excel. Let's put in our information. So we got the current assets. Current assets. If I misspell it, I apologize. 200,000 and the current liabilities. Let's just call it liabilities. And we're going to say 142,000. Now, what do we do with these two? Because we had the working, they only gave us two numbers. So notice they're, they're talking about current assets and current liabilities. They didn't give us what I would expect usually with a ratio, which is the current ratio. We don't have that one. So it's not going to, it's actually going to be the working capital. And the tricky thing about working capital is it's not the one we usually see. It's going to be the subtraction problem. It's not a ratio. It's going to be the 200 minus the 142 useful number, but not a ratio. So not something that we can typically compare uh, to other other companies because it's not in the form of a ratio. So the working capital, uh, you got to keep that one in mind. It's going to be part of our financial statement analysis, not a ratio, however, and it's simply taking the current assets minus the current liabilities. How much are the current assets over the current liabilities on a dollar amount? So we have the 80, 58,000. Okay, so obviously not a ratio, not a ratio. And, and then we have the 58,000. Uh, note that ratio because the only other thing we can do with this you would think just to be aware of test taking skills would be this divided by this and if we would, were to consider that we've got the 0 0.71 which isn't reflected there you would think it would be reflected there but anyways we have the 58,000 and it's going to be the positive 58,000 assets are greater than the liabilities.